<laughs> Shut up. Okay, the, the, the AV that was done for 2014 worked brilliantly. Now, I'll just take you through a basic setup. Okay. Um, what we have here is uh, an outline. Okay. So, each one of these things represents a room. Okay. Uh, let me try. <laughs> okay, all right. So, I know that this isn't that clear, but uh, I'll try and take you through it. All right. Um, and Mark, are you going to... Don't try and do nice pick and pick. Oh, blimey. Yes. Okay. 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 I don't care. <laughs> all right. Bloody hell. Okay, now, all right, let's take a look at... Um, okay. Um, okay, so, from here... To the left is the room. Okay, so we have. Well let's start off with the master laptop. Okay, so the master laptop takes feeds in. The first feed that it takes is from a camera. Okay, so that plugs into a laptop or a desktop. Okay, that is running what they call DV switch. DV switch is very simple. Um, you type in DV switch uh, hyphen H for host, IP address, and then the port number. Okay? And don't touch them. Um, <laughs> okay, now, so, um, so everything connects to it. All right, we have a speaker's mic, bigger button, and that also plugs into the laptop, and that comes in as a DV source ULSA device. So it goes into DV switch. We have a slave laptop or slave laptops? No, don't. Oh. Okay. So, your slave laptop, which gains the screen. So, can you go over there and switch it to just between screen and me? Yes. Just means it's recording. Okay. Um, so we capture that. Uh, we've captured it using in 2011, 12, 13, and 14 using a device called the Twin Pack. So we capture the projector using a Twin Pack. They cost us about $900 in 2011. Um, all of these devices connect up to the computers that send okay so everything every device is a firewire device okay so the camera is a firewire device that plugs into a laptop which then uh, sends it through an ethernet so we effectively put the laptops act as firewire to ethernet converters it's still the same stream. It's still what they call DV stream, okay, which then gets piped through a network to the master computer, okay. So, bloody hell. Um, now, so uh, so the speaker's laptop plugs into the twin pack, which then sends. Do you want to come up on stage, Garrett Gavin? 
Yes. Um, so, we, we, um, so, DV switch, the, uh, the twin packs pop up to the screen, go to the sa uh, laptop, and then go to the master laptop, okay? Yeah. Split the screen. Okay, so they effectively act as a double adapter. Okay, pipe that to the laptop. Laptop goes over there, pipes it to the master laptop. Um, and the master laptop captures a camera, either through directly through the camera, uh, through its own uh, file port, or through another laptop, much as the uh, slave laptop. So you can have multiple slaves around the place. So you can have multiple cameras. Okay, so the master laptop ha runs DV Switch, which is a mixing program, and enables you to flick between the uh, between the uh, sources. And you can do stuff like pick and pick. You can go over there and you can gently fade between one and one. yep. Ah, uh, okay. What does pick and pick mean? That's very simple. Uh, pick and pick means that you can go over there and you can have two sources, one within the other. Okay? So, for example, right now I'm assuming that my ugly mug is somewhere in a box. Okay? <laughs> and the projector is taking up most of the frame. Okay? Now, so this pipes us to a file server. A nice car server. Okay. The file server. The file server. My mother never said to brush my teeth. Um. Okay. <laughs> so the file server goes over there, captures the files. Uh, in 2014, uh, and in 2013, we used R sync to do so. Uh, a nice car. A stream goes to an ice car server, okay, um, and this ice car server then went over there and then published it in 2011 to the internet, but in 2014 to our own internal server. Okay, this was in this was really good. The problems with this system is is that DV is Getting these things to work robustly is a problem. Okay? <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. And so you really need to test these things out. So um, after the Perth guys experienced 2013 and thought, oh shit, we're going to have to do this in 2014, they went out there and they set themselves goals. So the first goal that they had was have a robust system. In other words, if something broke down, if the camera stopped picking up, it would restart the camera. If the uh, source from the twin pack stopped, it would restart automatically so that, the so that the volunteers within the rooms didn't need to go over there and restart these things, okay? Because which had always been a problem in the past, okay? Do it cheap, so they use cheap equipment. Um... The cameras that they rented in 2013 cost them a bundle. Um, they used tripods, which weren't that good, even though that they were rented man prototype tripods. Cool. I'll stay. Um, and they, they, so they decided, A, to use all of the equipment that had been supplied to them over the course of many years. B, to get their own cameras. Because they could buy really, they could buy semi-professional cameras on eBay relatively cheaply, um, do a firmware upgrade, and they turn into suitable cameras. So they knew the cameras that they were going to buy. They were able to experiment and get the right camera for the job. Okay, and so these ended up being those ones, the cameras. Um. And then be done pretty much when the conference finished. So they had pre-prepared scripts, so they knew what scripts that they needed to write. Uh, they had a title sequence, um, and they were able to go over there and just insert um, 
the titles and the speaker's name into those title and sequences and through using the serve scripts, pipe those through, get them transcoded into HD64 and then place them wherever they wanted to. Okay, So the first place that this went to was the uh, LCA no, Linux Australia Mirror, which is run by Arnet. Okay, and that worked pretty well. I think by Wednesday they were doing it. Um, so what worked? The first thing was the back of house stuff. So the networking was in place. We could communicate all with the laptops. They could go over there and assess whether or not that using their scripts uh, and the software that they developed, which was called Invent Server, they could assess whether or not a laptop was working, whether it was down, whether the DV switch was working, whether it was recording, what was going on, etc. Okay, and there were improvements made to that system as the conference w went on. One of the big issues was not being able to tell when something was recording. Okay, they also had a big board where our icecast streams went to, and that showed six streams. And I was the poor bastard that sat in the room looking at all of the screen streams going, gee, I'd really like to sit and watch that entire thing, but I now have to listen to this particular room and then switch to that one. And that's awful. I really don't want to hear that crap. And then switch to that one and that one and that one. So the idea was to monitor what the volunteers were doing uh, and through using IRC and the telephone systems and also radios, so we had three lines of communication. We were able to, yes, three lines of communication. We were able to go up there and we were able to direct volunteers to do stuff. So let's say that the head was too big. So, so they were too close. <laughs> or that they were too far. Okay. Um, so... The way that you shoot a person is, is that you, they use three cameras. No, sorry, they use two cameras. One of them would do a wide shot, which is useful for when people are moving, because that they quickly get out of. <laughs> um, so you get speakers that would go over and move across and that they wouldn't be quite forward, and it gives you a jerky mo movement. <laughs> so what you do is you switch to the wide shot. <laughs> so we, you switch to the wide shot when they're moving, and when they're stationary, the person that is operating the, uh, was it uh, the headshot, the close-up shot, is able to focus in, get the right position, and then you switch, then the DV switch operator switches to that feed, okay? So wide shot for movement, close-up shot when they're stationary. It works beautifully. Um, and in fact, our volunteers complained when they only had one camera in the room because uh, it gave them that much, that much extra control. Uh-oh. As the person responsible for the money, he might be suggesting that they have two cameras per room. This won't be happening. <laughs> so, anyway, there's a number of cameras that have already been purchased, so Clinton might not need to worry. Um, so, the, the, the communication... So what really worked was A, their systems, they tested everything, made sure that all the firewire cables were good, they made sure that they were all plugged in, they had systems whereby if something, a piece of the equipment failed, they were able to quickly adjust to that situation using scripts and using, um, they were identifying problems easily. They had someone watching the feeds, making sure that the volunteers were, you know, if they were having any issues, like, for example, audio clipping, I could probably pick up on that. Um, I'll detail some of the other, some of the issues. But in general, the volunteers and the staff were working well together. 
the volunteers that we had for this year were absolutely superb. There was one recording uh, done uh, whose DV switch operator was uh, Michael Brothwick, I think it is. Pardon Michael if I got that wrong. Um, and he was able to record a musical video by that, that was Pierre War. Check it out, it's awesome. And they used two cameras to go up there and capture... They used two cameras to go up there and capture uh, Pia War from different angles. They used fade to gently fade between those different camera angles. They did a really professional job. No, not the, the fart song did have some of that, but Pia War's first song, which wasn't the fart song, song was done beautifully. <laughs> so, our volunteers were awesome. And because they didn't need to worry about DV switch crashing or what to do, etc., things were pretty much done by for them automatically. They were able to concentrate more on the capturing of video, the listening to audio, etc. That said, we did run into a few issues. Ah! Uh, so, our biggest issue was audio clipping. Um, quite often, I had to leave the room and deliver, you know, an adapter, etc., to each room. Um, <coughs> or something came up and I had to quickly go to a room. And while I was gone, no one was really monitoring the streams. Uh, some rooms had more of a problem. For example, wool had a bit of an issue with uh, audio feedback, especially. It was rather funny that an audio engineer did a talk and he stood too close to uh, one of these mics, the gooseneck mics, and he got feedback from that microphone. And he didn't seem to appreciate that it could be heard within the room. So, <coughs> um, clipping is a bit of an issue when you have this type of thing going on. Um, so, someone speaks rather softly and they're not talking very loud. And then they yell and scream into the microphone. <laughs> 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 okay, cool. Um, so, uh, one particular note, uh, who will, whose name shall go unmentioned, but who was on the core team? Uh, I got a response from the volunteer saying, he's really excited, he's awesome to listen to, but he keeps on clipping because he goes from very soft to very loud very quickly. And we're having troubles going out there and controlling the gain on him. And he's really an oh, excellent talker, speaker. So, uh, audio clipping is a problem. Um, the other problem is, is that we had run sheets. Now, a run sheet is... Um, a run sheet is... is a printout is effectively put um, just the list of all of the uh, talks that are going to be in the room and the volunteers make notes about that particular talk. Okay, not the talk that was on the website or um, I had audio clipping in this particular room or there was a little bit of feedback or uh, there was a camera issue, etc. So any issues that they have, they write down on these sheets. It was a bit difficult to read them, and in the end, most of the time, especially for the uh, mini comps, which were very a lot of talks, very quick talks, etc., uh, they just went out there and they just watched every session and chose the videos. Um, the TV switch record toggle was not managed. They didn't figure out how to do that until after the conference. And one, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't managed from them. So it's, you got to record, you got a big flashing stop, and 
I've done it. I uh, didn't realise that the stop meant, oh, the recording had stopped. <clears throat> and so they only worked that one out when we looked at the file and went, uh, something's not coming through here, guys. And they went, oh, shit. They went up there and then they, uh, was it uh, Jason and Leon, managed to go up there and get the speaker that talked for that session to, re, uh, to redo her talk and they recorded it. Okay, So another video saved. Um, we had one hardware failure. There was one of the, um, one of the uh, laptops. Um, the laptops, the main laptops had a USB hard drive attached to them recording the stream. Okay, and the USB controller on that particular laptop had issues, so we didn't realise that until after we'd switched over, we, we'd switched hard drives. Um, but that was solved relatively quickly. Um, overall, 2014 did a wonderful job of recording audio, uh, recording video. So we now get to the future. <coughs> oh, there, there, there. Um, okay, so uh, th they want to go up there and develop the internal streaming monitoring stuff, uh, make it more usable so that we could see the audio levels. Um, is it to expand the external streaming um, and try and get crowdsourcing going. Um, a better summary of the dashboard. That's the monitoring software that they were using to monitor that the computers were okay. Sometimes they didn't pick up on issues because <coughs> it was a little bit higgledy-piggledy, so they want to refine that. Uh, they, as I mentioned before, the audio clipping issues, so we're looking at various solutions. Um, so we need to do that. The other thing is, is that DV is quickly becoming a problem. It's the twin packs aren't being produced. We need to find a solution that will go up there and record those, record the, the, the projectors. The twin packs were effectively put our only real way of doing so. So we're gradually moving towards a HDMI system. Okay. Um, now, is there any questions? No, standard definition. Yeah, sorry, speeder. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, okay. So, does recording in does recording using HDMI mean that we will switch? We will need to switch to uh, high definition. No, it doesn't. Uh, we can transcode it on the fly into a format that's suitable for DV standard D, D, uh, DV. Okay. It's just that we're changing. Just that we need to be. We need to switch to devices that can input HDMI, whereby we can change it to a better format, a more easily managed format. The other thing is DV switch is DV switch is set in DV. There is no high definition. It's a bit kludgy. Uh, the GUI is a bit problematic. It doesn't. You've got various issues like a lot of. Um, the previews and the preview buttons get hit, so you have to kind of move up the entire thing uh, using alt, uh, alt mouse to move them to gain access. So in the future, how far into the future? I don't know, but we're looking at maybe replacing DV switch, but definitely not for at least a year or two, okay? Or three. Uh, so, yeah, any other questions? Yes? What's it all written in? What is it all written in? Okay, um, 
And DV switch is written, I think it's C. Yep. Um, is it? Uh, that's pretty much about it. Um, it's DV switch is just written in C. Um, the event streaming software that the guys are using, Leon's a bit of a Perl nut, so he's written it entirely in Perl. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, no. So, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, we could rewrite event streamer, but I don't think that's really a good idea. <coughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, our zookeeper outputs them. Um, so, Clinton asked, um, "Is there any way that this can? Is there any? No. Does this hook into GStream? Uh, does this hook into? Oh, shit, it's too late, and I'm a little bit drunk. Um, does this hook into zookeeper? Okay. No. Oh. Um. Yes. G uh, Zookeeper. Uh, Zookeeper goes over there, outputs a JSON file, uh, which is the schedules. Okay. And they contain the information required to go over there and to put titles, automatically put titles onto the videos. Okay. Yes. Ah, that's a very good question. Um, It amazes me, Clinton. The, 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 the it amazes me. It amazes me that I have to ask the video game to do nothing to fix mm. that because filing to the picture factory is actually my actually Clinton, what we did sorry, you need to repeat what you said. Okay. Clinton just bitched <laughs> about us bitching about the speakers not repeating questions. To answer your question, Clinton, is that <laughs> Um, the, the, the thing that we recognise is, is that speakers get up, they get nervous, they don't tend to repeat questions just like how I've done here, okay? And so you really need to have a system whereby you can capture that audio, okay? Because speakers go, I need to do my talk, I need to do my talk, I need to do my talk, and it's a rare individual that I've found that will repeat the questions that are asked of them. Okay, and we're talking about a bunch of geeks who, yes. Um, so, to respond to you, um, I think, and to respond to Russell's question about using question mics, uh, in the main auditorium for PyCon, we'll be probably, we'll have two sp uh, microphones, static. static microphones, that people can go up and ask. They'll be controlled by hopefully two volunteers. Uh, there is an idea that I've got that I'm nicking off another place uh, called what they call Catchbox. Unfortunately, Catchbox won't be manufacturing until after June and they will be using 2.4 gigahertz and they need to get approval by the Australian government. Yeah, so it, it, what I'm thinking is using a wireless lapel mic which are very small, whacking that into a fluffy toy and chucking that around. Seeing if that works. It's worth a shot. Yes? <laughs> um, so Clinton's asking for the number of my drug dealers so they can get a bit... Um, as I don't do drugs apart from the occasional bit of alcohol, uh, unlike himself, um, <laughs> the answer is no, I haven't smoked anything this morning. Uh, yes. Are you thinking to have a uh, floor mic for questions that can just come up with the rehearsal? That's a good idea. Okay, the question is, are we intending on having a floor mic? Yeah. Shut up.
We yes, we will need a mic stand. So, okay, cool. So, okay, so, so yes, we will be trying to do that. Our first priority is to get audio working without issues. Uh, yeah. It's not really working. Exactly, Clinton. It only takes six hours until it works. I did. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, any more questions? Yes? Um, yeah, so, um, the suggestion is is that we have more volunteers running around delivering stuff. To which I answer this. A lot of the issue was uh, we need a HDMI to VGA adapter. Uh, we need uh, this adapter. We need that adapter. HDMI adapters are free. Yeah. And... A, I'm a fat, lazy bastard, and so running towards these places took me a lot of time. Um, and I'm a lazy bastard, so I decide. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm kind of thinking it's probably better just to have the adapters in the room. They don't cost that much, and if they save a couple of videos, they'll be well worth it. Anything else? Gary. I make it bigger, Gary. Gary. Repeat the fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gary. Repeat the question. No, no. It's a serious question. How do you deal with that bright spot on the front of your headset? Uh, Gary asked me, how do I deal with that white spot on the top of my head? Bright spot. Bright spot. Well, for you, Gary, I put on extra uh, polish and give it a bit of extra shine. Oh, bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> um, Clinton went over there and said that we go over there and we put the uh, we put the speaker into a cage and we don't allow them out until they finish the talk. My suggestion is, is that I don't think the speakers will probably follow that and will move away from the cage. So we probably should make the suggestion. But... Yes, but if they do go over there and if they do walk out in front of the screen like that and they do get a nice big bright spot, then the DV switch operator can probably switch to the projector image or cancel the pick and pick um, and thus go over there and remove the problem. Okay. Uh, okay, all right. Clinton asked, Clinton asked, uh, when you see the, see the live stream, do you see the pick and pick? And the answer is yes, always. But that doesn't mean that the pick and pick is necessarily the best thing to do at a particular time. For example, in 2011, we advised people not to do pick and pick because our C the CP because that places an additional load on DV switch, on the machine running DV switch, and our computers were barely keeping up with DV switch. 
So in the end, we, we went out there and we said, don't do pick and pick. Uh, it's really up to the volunteers. Um, that's another thing with DV Switch. The pick and pick is a bit funny. It, 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 it's not as easy as flicking between from the sources. Yeah. But that's no real issue. Okay. Uh, there was a question. Mark says that's a bit clunky. Yeah, and I agree with him. Um, with the pic picture in picture, look, you can even do this. Hello. Uh, <laughs> um, there you go, you got the effect. Essentially, pick and pick, it's difficult sometimes. Well, it's not difficult, it's just clunky, because essentially, just for example, if I switch away, it's going to go, It's it removes the pick and pick as soon as I switch to another source. So if I switch back, and then what I have to do, now, at it has previously defined, it, it, it's a bit hard probably to see on the camera, but you can kind of define an area. Now, there was already a previously defined area there, but then you go apply. So now you've got that. But then when you go bump again, then you have to go pick and pick and then apply. And look, and, and that's what happens, unfortunately. It, it does the cascading effect, so you have to switch it around. Because what it does is it's the pick and pick applies to whatever the B source is. And if the B source... If you switch back to whatever was the B source, the A and the B source are that. So that's the problem with it. Okay. Uh, and you, were, uh, Clinton, you are uh, going to ask me a question. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How long do you intend to do the software in Oh shit. Um, okay, Clinton asked, how long was it going to go out there and take to be uploaded to YouTube? The big problem is, is that, okay, we've got no real internet access here, and I'm not too sure if I want to... Okay, cool. Mark is saying that he will have it uploaded within 24 hours. Okay, no worries. Uh, then, um, shut up! <laughs> Andrew asks, how big are the video files? And they're about 12 gigs per hour. Yeah, and so... Um, no, that computer doesn't have internet access here. So it's as Russell says, we're in a condemned building. Um, yeah, we are in a condemned building. It's a beautiful building, but it's condemned. Um, if you want me to tell the story about this building, which is awesome, I'll let you know some other time. Okay, thanks. Yeah.